What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way, you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are on Chapter 3 in our series of reviewing the SSI Dry Suit Diver Program. As we stated in other videos, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out to dive a dry suit. You need to make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI Dry Suit instructor so that you can stay safe while diving a dry suit. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter three. Now in chapter three, we're gonna learn a little bit about the valves that a dry suit uses. Now typically with a dry suit, of course, you are going to have some type of inflator valve on your chest. Now, one of the benefits we talked about in chapter two was getting a custom fitted dry suit. By getting a custom fitted dry suit, you can also get that valve placed wherever it is that you want it. If you want it dead center or if you want it slightly off. I know a lot of times in public safety work, I'm wearing an additional harness outside of my BC itself. And of course, I need that dry suit inflator valve put in a certain position. Or let's say that you're a side mount diver and you have your inflator valve coming up. You don't want the two pushing up up against each other and creating, say, a runaway ascent by overinflation of one or the other. So you can actually, through a custom suit, get it placed wherever you actually need it placed. Now, the next part of chapter three that we're going to look at is the dry suit inflator hose. Now, this is just typically a standard inflator hose, if you will. There are certain dry suit manufacturers that use proprietary hoses, but for the most part, most of the bigger manufacturers are going to use a standard inflation hose. And I actually prefer to have, say, a custom length hose for me. That means whichever way I route it is going to be the exact length I need without creating any type of an entanglement. Now, as a quick reference for you, in single tank back mount, I run my dry suit inflator hose over my shoulder. This way, if I have to don and doff my equipment in the water, I don't have to go searching for that inflator hose. I know a lot of people like to run it under their arm, but for me, it tends to work better to run it directly over my uh, shoulder here. Now, with that being said, of course, I do need that custom length hose. Now, in back mounted doubles, my dry suit inflator hose comes underneath my right arm and plugs into my inflator valve, as does it in side mount. So, if I'm using a dry suit in side mount, that inflator hose is going to come under my right arm because it is fed by my right cylinder. And now, no matter which way I do it, each of my systems is set up with a custom length hose so that I'm not having any extra loop of that hose and creating an entanglement when I'm underwater. Now, the last part of chapter three that we're going to talk about is the exhaust valve. And there's several different positions of an exhaust valve. There's several different profiles of an exhaust valve, where it's a high profile or low profile. Your preference is really going to dictate what you get. And this is another benefit to getting a custom suit because you can get it installed with the exact valves that you want. Now, the two major places that you will see dry suit manufacturers put them is on the outside of the left arm and, of course, directly on the inside where the bicep area is of the left arm as well. Now, there's pros and cons to each. Typically with a tech-based uh, dry suit company, they will always put their exhaust valve on the left shoulder on the outside. And the reason that they do that is if you're swimming horizontally and you need to dump air from the suit, you can simply just raise up your arm. Now with more recreational based dry suit companies, they will tend to put the exhaust valve on the inside of the arm here. And the reason they do that is because a lot of open water students are taught to come up vertically. That means they're swimming to the surface and as they go to ditch air out of their BC, they can also ditch a little bit of air out of their dry suit at the same time. Guys, that's going to do it for chapter three in our series on the SSI Dry Suit Diver course. Make sure you're seeking out proper instruction from your local SSI Diver Dry Suit instructor. And also make sure you're checking out your local retail center to see what dry suit options are out there for you. As I stated earlier, I would encourage you to get a custom made dry suit because then you can specifically state where you want the valves, which valves you want, and even which hoses you want to fill that dry suit up. Guys, that's going to be it for chapter three. Stay tuned. We've got three more videos in this series. And as I stated, we really hope this video series helps you pass your final exam when you're taking the SSI Dry Suit Diver course. If you want a little bit more information, we did more in-depth, detailed videos on dry suit diving. I'll link a playlist down below that I think will really come in handy and help you out as a dry suit diver as well. But that's going to do it for this part of chapter three. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.